Hi everyone, I hope this video finds you all well and in good health. Today I want to have a look at a plugin that may be especially interesting for those of you who do a lot of architectural projects. This plugin is called Ballister 4D and it is by Salvatore Maisano and you can buy it from a company called Kaleidos 4D. This is the Kaleidos 4D website. I've posted a link in the video description and here you can see the plugins contained in the architectural pack. And over here on the right you can see a list of the plugins that are contained in this pack. Some of these plugins can be bought individually. The price for the architectural pack is 77 euros. Some of the plugins though, like Ballister 4D, the one that we're going to have a look at in this video, can only be bought as a pack together with Stairs 4D and this kind of makes sense. If I click on Ballister 4D, you can see the plugin contains both Ballister 4D and Stairs 4D and the price is 39 euros. And the price for another useful plugin, which is called Win for Doors, also is 39 euros. So getting the entire pack is definitely an advantage over buying the individual plugins. Over here on the right, you can see a link to a change log. If you click on that, you will get a list of changes that have been made to the individual versions. The current version is 2.6 and the main changes are that a tab was added for materials, which is actually quite useful. And also it is now possible to rotate the mullions, which is another small improvement that I personally find very useful. There also is a link to a PDF manual that used to work. Unfortunately, if you click on that, you will get a 404 error. I'm not sure if you will receive the manual when you buy the plugin. If you don't, you might want to contact Kaleidos 4D and request a copy of the PDF manual. Back when I bought the plugin, the PDF manual was still available, so I have a copy of that. If you scroll down a bit, you can see that there are a couple of videos introducing this plugin. All of them are without narration, there's only background music, but they're still quite useful if you want to get an overview of the plugin. And here at the bottom of the page, you can see a couple of promotional renders that show what you can do with this plugin. The PDF manual is fairly short. It only has 15 pages. With respect to some of the features, the explanations could be a little more clear, but the PDF manual is helpful in getting you started and for getting an overview of the individual functions and features of the plugin. Like most Cinema 4D plugins, you need to copy this plugin to your Cinema 4D plugin folder. And if you navigate to the Ballister 4D folder, you can see that it has a couple of subfolders. One is for custom presets, one is for gadgets. And gadgets are just individual objects that you can save and load in Cinema 4D for use with Ballister 4D. You can save custom presets from within Cinema 4D using the plugin. For the gadgets, that is not possible for some reason. However, you can open gadgets for Ballister 4D from within Cinema 4D and make changes to those objects and save them again. We will have a look at how you can do that a little bit later. So here we are in Cinema 4D. Let's go ahead and have a look how the plugin works. If you go to your plugins folder, I have all of my Kaleidos plugins moved to the architectural pack folder. And here you can see the Ballister 4D plugin. If you click on it, you will add a Ballister 4D object to your scene. And down here, you can see all of the options in the attributes manager. As such, Ballister 4D doesn't do anything. And the reason for that is because it requires a root to work. And this root is a spline. I'm going to add an ensign spline to the scene and put it on the floor. And I'm going to drag this ensign spline into the root slot here. And you can see still nothing happens. And that's because Ballister 4D requires an editable spline to work. While the spline is still parametric, you can make changes as you see fit. For example, I could increase or decrease the number of sides. I'm going to stick with the default here, select the spline and hit C on the keyboard to make it editable. And now you can see a change here. And what you see here is what Ballister 4D does as a default setup. 
So now we've added the root, let's have a look at the other options here. We can ignore the stairs for the left option here, because this only works if you're also using the stairs for d plugin. And what this option enables you to do is to put your railing on the left side of the stairs. By default, it is created on the right side. You can make changes to this layout. And if you want to, you can save those changes as the default. Right now, the default is what you see here in the viewport. And if you've made a lot of changes and you don't want to use Control Z to go back many steps, you can also restore the stored default by clicking on this button here. What copy property and apply property means is that you can copy the properties of one Ballister 4D object and paste those properties to another Ballister 4D object. And in order for this to work, you will need more than one Ballister 4D objects. This button here is a save button. And if you click on it, you can enter a name and hit OK. And then whatever setup you have here, will be saved as one of the presets. I'm going to call this tutorial test two, hit okay. And then you can load this preset by clicking on this button here. I'll just make some small changes here, just so you can see that a little bit better. And again, I'm going to save this as tutorial test 02. If I click on this button here, you can see a list of all of the stored presets. And here we have our tutorial test two. If I first of all restore the default, it's going back to the default setup. And then I can load my tutorial test 02. And you can see the setup with the changes that I've made. I just go back to the default here. This button here is the gadget button. If you click on it, you will jump to the folder where all of your presets are stored. So it's actually not the gadget folder, it's the one for the presets because the gadgets are individual objects that you can store as default objects or preset objects. There's not much you can do in here except rename files or delete files. I'll just get rid of these and just close that window. And now if I click on this preset button here, you can see all of the tutorial presets are gone. Now let's have a look at the other options down here. Before I do though, I want to take a quick look at the materials tab, which is new in version 2.6. And all you can do here is add materials to your individual objects. The mullions or posts are here at the top. So if you click on this little arrow to open the drop down, you can see we have a material slot here. Let me just quickly create a material. I can just drag and drop it into here and you can see the color of the mullions change. Let's make another material for the panels. I'm going to drag this into the slot and now we have blue balusters and white mullions. And you can see that you have some basic options for changing the projection, make the textures tileable or seamless, and you can use offsets. So that's all there is to say about the materials tab here. I'll just go back a few steps. And now we can have a look at the settings for the individual components. First of all is the mullions or the posts. And you can see here at the top, you can pick a profile and you have a couple of options, rectangle, circle, personal or nothing, and inside. So if I change that to circle, you can see the plugin updates in the viewport. And we now have circular mullions. One thing that I'm missing is that it is not possible to change the resolution of the spline. And these setups tend to get very heavy very quickly. So having an option to reduce the resolution of the splines would have been a nice option to have. Unfortunately, we don't. However, we can always change that to an end side. And for the end side, we can actually change the resolution to something that we want. I'm going to keep this at the default of six and go back to the default, which is rectangle. And you can see that we have an option for a radius in one direction 
and a radius in the other direction. The option for the sides is grayed out. This is only applicable to the end side profile. And we can also change the position on the Y axis. And by right clicking on these arrows, you can reset everything to the default settings. One option that has been added in release 2.6 is the option to rotate the mullions. If I go to my top view, you can see that a little bit better. So this is the default rotation of the mullions. If I check the mullions rotation box here, you can see the posts get rotated. This actually is a pretty useful option. I only wish that it was possible to move the mullions in this direction because with this setup you might want the other elements to be positioned more at the center of the posts. Unfortunately, it is not possible to do that. You can only move the mullions up or down. The profile option that I've skipped is the personal or nothing option. If you switch to that, you can see nothing changes. In here, you can only add a real object. So adding a spline will not do anything. I'll just create another end side, switch it to XZ, and I'm going to move this over. And I'm going to change the radius to maybe 10. So like I said, adding this to or adding this as a personal object will not really do anything. Well, it does do something. The original posts will disappear, which is a bit weird because, you know, this is what should happen as long as you don't put anything into this slot here. So if you want nothing at the position where the posts are, just drop a dummy object in there and they will disappear. I'm going to add an extrude object to this spline here and I'm going to extrude it up maybe 120 like this and maybe I'll make this even a little bit smaller or change the radius to something smaller and I can drag this in here and you can see still nothing happens. So you actually need to put a polygon object in there. If I select my extrude object and switch on create single object and I'm going to make this editable. Let's go ahead and change the font angle to maybe 33. And you can see now we're getting an update here. So personal object is a polygon object and not a spline object. You can create your own custom objects and save them to the gadgets folder and then use them in setups like this. And the way to do that is, let me just copy that and go to a new file and paste this object here. Just put it at the center. What you need to do is create the object, give it a name. Let's call this six sided post. And then you need to save that file under the same name. So I'm going to copy that name and I'm going to save this as, and I've already navigated to the gadgets folder in Cinema 4D's plugin folder. So you need to go to your Ballister 4D folder, open the gadgets folder, and then you can save it under the same name. And now what you can do is, if I go back to the original file, and I'll just undo a couple of steps, go back to the default setup here. So now if I go to personal or nothing, you can see we have a couple of options here. You can either create an object in the present scene like I did before, or you can hit this button here which will uh, take you to the gadget folder. You can see our six sided post is in here. If I double click on that, nothing seems to happen. If I close that window, I will get a new C4D file with that object in there, which is not really helpful. I think the reason that gadget button exists is so you can open your gadgets in Cinema 4D. You can make changes for example, scale the object and you can save that file. And if I close that, and I'm also going to close this one, I can now go and add the personal object with the objects button here over on the right. And you can see it already lists the six sided post that we've created. 
if I add this, it's going to come into the scene. And since I've changed the size, the size has been updated and will now be loaded. So let me go back. So with this button here, you can open your custom objects, you can change them, save the changes, and, and then use the objects button to actually import them and use them for your setup here. I'm going to switch that back to rectangle. Now let's have a look at the panels group. The settings are mostly the same. You do have some different options for the panels or balusters. One of the most important options here is the maximum distance. If you decrease that, you will add more panels or balusters. If you increase that number, you will get fewer balusters here. And like before, with the mullions, you have options to change the radius in both directions. You can change the height of the object. And like with the mullions, you can change the position on the y-axis. You also have the possibility to choose different profiles. And these are the same as the ones for the mullions. You can have a rectangle, a circle, or an inside. Again, for the circle, you cannot change the resolution. And you also have the option to add a personal object. So if we wanted to, we could reload our six-sided post here, and it will be added instead of the default panels. I'll just switch that back to rectangle. By the way, the mullions are created on the spline points of this spline here. And spline points means the actual points. So I don't mean these ones here. You can change those to uniform, natural, and so on and so forth. But the mullions will be created on the actual spline points. If I select all of these, right click and subdivide, I'm adding additional points here. If I switch my baluster 4D object back on, you can see that now we have more of these posts. And in this case, it would probably be a good idea to use the rotation option in order to make sure to line these ones up here. What you can also do is modify that spline. For example, if I select it, grab this point, disconnect it, and then delete it, the Ballister 4D object will automatically update. I can also select a point and move it around, and you can see this is updated as well. Let me just go back a few steps. And now let's have a look at the current group. In this group, you can add up to eight additional elements. I'll just open the first one here. And by default, you can't see anything. As soon as you change the position on the y-axis from zero to anything other than zero, you will see a new object here. And for this object, you can change the position, you can change the profile. Unfortunately, and that is something I'm really missing in this plugin, is the option to add a personal object. There is no way you can do that using the plugin. If you want to, you could use the spline or a copy of that spline to add your own custom objects. I'm going to show you that in a second. Let's just have a look at the other options here in the current group first. And like before, you can change the radius in two directions. I'm not sure what the offset point start and the plane options mean. The same goes for the offset point end and the plane end. I think this may be for a straight splines, maybe. Let's just go ahead and hide these. Let's just go ahead and delete these points here. And I'm going to add another baluster 4D object. Use this as a root. And let's see if I add a current group to this one. something interesting happens. But you can see this gets smaller here at the end. I'm not sure why that is. 
This looks like a bug to me. I've never seen that before. Oh, no, it's because the offset start point is set to 30. Is it? No, no, I was wrong. I can't really see a change if I adjust these settings here. These settings are not described in the manual, so I have no idea what these do. I'm just going to delete these two objects again. And let's go back to our original object here. So that's all of the options you have for the current groups. And like I said, you can add up to eight additional elements. And if you want to add a custom shape, what I would do is copy the path spline. You can then move it up and put it in a sweep object. And you could add, I don't know, an n-sided spline, for example. Let's make two centimeters. And you could add that custom shape. like so. And if you need a handrail or something, which would go on top, you could use a current group for that, but you cannot add a custom profile. So for this, I could use one of the profiles from my architectural profile collection. I'll put a link to that in the video description. It's a free collection of 1800 architectural profiles. So if I add this one to the scene and just make it a child of the sweep object here, delete this one. I now have a handrail on top of the Ballister 4D object. So this would be something that would be useful as a personal object in the profile options here. So this is the end of my review of this plugin. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Stay safe and stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon.